Icons are the result of maverick geniuses, I think, is the, is the reality. You need to be a genius, and you need to harness it in a, in a I'm going to bust the rules wide open kind of maverick way. And if you do it well enough, you end up being an icon. It can't be done in a different order. You can't be an icon and then become a maverick and a genius. But you need to be a genius and a maverick, and then you can turn into an icon. So that's your theme. Icons, mavericks, and, gen and geniuses, you probably should have it in the maverick genius icon sequence to be correct. You should be calling your conference uh, Genius, Mavericks, and Icons. Because that's the kind of the chronological order. I think the probably the most important career advice I could give anyone is to find something you love and then be obsessed about doing it. Every day, every morning, waking up, thinking, caring, planning, trying to figure out how to do this thing that you're obsessed about. Uh, I don't know if I had the most talent. I don't know if I had the most education. Matter of fact, I know I didn't have the most education. But I think my intensity, my passion, my desire to do what I do is the reason I've accomplished as much as I've accomplished, done as much as I've done, and enjoyed the hell out of, of uh, my career. The, the, sacrifice, the sacrifice thing is interesting because, again, you go back to being obsessed and passionate about what you do. It kind of mitigates the idea that it's sacrifice to work late, it's sacrifice to work weekends, it's sacrifice to put your work ahead of, you know, someone you love. It, it's, it's sacrifice, but at the same time, you're doing it because you love what you do and you're passionate about what you're trying to accomplish. So it doesn't necessarily feel like sacrifice in the kind of, oh, what a sacrifice I've got to make here. But I guess it's sacrifice. The... the failure part I just think kind of comes with the territory if you're if you're trying to do something that's never been done before or trying to do something better than it's been done before or trying to prove that you're as good as or better than anyone else who's trying to do what you do I think you're gonna fail if you don't fail you're probably not trying hard enough uh, so I think Failure just comes with the territory, and, and, and failure becomes a motivator. Um, I, think if you, I think if you take most creative people who are successful, they're kind of a combination of ego that wants to do something big, bold, important, famous, and insecurity, which means, shit, I don't think I'm good enough. I'm, <laughs> I, I think I'm fooling everybody here. They, they're going to be on to me at one of these days. So it's almost like everything you look at fails a little bit because you look at it and you say, that's not as good as it needs to be. Somebody's, somebody else could do better than that. So I think constantly feeling like you're failing in terms of making it perfect is, again, an incredible motivator that makes people accomplish more than they would if they're easily satisfied. I discovered this place called Shiat Day that was being born in Los Angeles out of kind of the creative revolution in New York and and uh, here's this guy called Jay Shiat who's as obsessive as they get, as insecure as they get, as demanding as they get basically believing nothing is good enough, nothing is, nothing is perfect, nothing is done, and kind of heaped that burden onto me. You want to be any good, you got to try and prove to Jay you're any good. And so in his kind of aggressive, you know, I don't know if you're any good 
way of pushing me, uh, I think he made me do things I never knew I was going to be capable of doing. Uh, and I had a lot of dumb clients that, that uh, didn't inspire me at all, but then I had a client called Steve Jobs who, by his perfectionism, by his demands, by his obsession with doing things great, again, another mentor that pushed me to do things and try and accomplish things that I never maybe would have even attempted without being pushed in that way. Well, I, you know, I got to consider the most special and lucky part of my career to be the fact that I worked with, collaborated with, uh, had ideas with and for Steve Jobs from the time he was 25 years old till uh, we lost him last year. Uh, what an amazing experience to be around somebody that had this 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 radar, this ability to see into the future and and kind of demand that we all understand this is where we're going and how do we tell people about it? How do we invite people in? How do we make sure everybody's ex as excited as we are about the about what the future looks like? Uh, to be around that guy and 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 to say I had a little part of of what he accomplished is, I mean, how special is that for anybody, particularly an advertising guy? You know, how, many, how often does an advertising guy get to do something important? You know. <laughs> you know, I think I think the people Steve loved and respected the most, and given he was always the smartest guy in the room, I think he had a special respect for creative people, whether it was John Lasseter at Pixar, whether it was Johnny Ives in the design department at Apple, or, or myself. For some reason, he had a special, special feeling about creative people and wanted them around him and trusted them more than anyone. Uh, so I think, again, the specialness of being one of the people that Steve actually took counsel from and trusted was uh, was really special and I think it was because I came from the creative side of the conversation. Somebody, somebody said, there's no such thing as bad taste. There's either taste or no taste. <laughs> um, so I think people are given, uh, uh, some people are given kind of an innate sense of loving design and and things visual and 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 things experiential and it's totally lost on other people who wouldn't even know what I was talking about if I said that shouldn't be there it should be there they go like what's the difference so I, th I think to some extent there are people who just don't get it and will never get it I think there's people that are kind of on the cusp and can cultivate um, an appreciation for design, uh, experiential, whether it be music or theater or, or books, authors. But very often you see a bunch of kind of fraudulent people trying to kind of, they aspire to having taste so they kind of put on the trappings of what they think is supposed to be uh, good taste this week. Um, so it's very interesting. I, 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 think, I think there are more left brain people than right brain people in the world, uh, which means there's more kind of rigid, kind of uh, stiff thinkers versus kind of more open-minded, out-of-the-box thinkers. So expecting everyone to have and appreciate things creative, things artistic, is maybe asking too much. But uh, the people who get it have to go try and do as much of it as they can. And maybe if everyone's surrounded by it, they'll succumb to good taste on the basis of they don't have an alternative. I had a wonderful woodworker who was the foreman of my last house. He's from New Zealand, and he built boats and and. I designed the house and I was 
really intensely involved in, in it evolving and, and being real. And I was such a pain in the ass to this craftsman, this artisan who said it, that basically it took as long as it took to do what he did right. And he wasn't going to allow me to push him. He wasn't going to allow me to go faster. He was going to make all of this wood, these beams, these windows, these all these things come together in a beautiful, elegant way. And the fact that I showed up every day and asked why he wasn't further along just annoyed him. He, he barely gave me an answer. He says, it'll be done when it's done. So impatience is comes with being obsessive, obsessive and passionate, but sometimes great talent can't be rushed. I think, you know, a maverick is someone who wants to break the rules. If they have a little bit of genius and this kind of driven maverick quality, uh, you have the ability to ultimately become famous, acknowledged, recognized in the, in the, in the thing that you want to do but you have to be obsessed and passionate and want to do it better than it's ever been done before. Jump higher, swim faster, uh, smell better. I'm Lee Cloud, thanks for having me at your conference. I hope I say something intelligent in this video and it's edited to make me look incredibly smart and not dumb. <laughs>